Hi everyone. Back in April of 2021, I took the family on a trip to Tasmania. It was our first time visiting, so stick around and watch our journey. The Spirit of Tasmania is a ferry service that travels once or twice daily between Melbourne and Devonport in the northern part of Tasmania. There are actually two ferries that ply this route and are aptly named Spirit of Tasmania 1 and Spirit of Tasmania 2. The journey takes about 9 to 11 hours and when you book your ticket, you have a choice of booking a deluxe cabin, a twin bed cabin, a four bed cabin, or just taking a complimentary recliner seat. The cabin accommodations are not part of the ticket price and needs to be booked separately. We took a twin bed cabin as we wanted to have the advantage of our own private shower and toilet facilities and also because we'd be driving a fair distance down to Hobart the next day and wanted to be well rested. You can check in two and a half hours before sailing time, with check-in closing 45 minutes before sailing. We chose to have dinner in Port Melbourne first before driving to Station Pier. The ferry has cafeteria-style dining facilities on board, but you get better food choices on shore. To board with your car, you will have to drive along Waterfront Place towards Melbourne Terminal at Station Pier. Here, you will be stopped for inspection before boarding. Tasmania prohibits import of items such as fresh fruit, fish, honeycomb, and various other items under its biosecurity control. It is best to check the Tasmanian government website before your travel. However, most non-perishable foods should be fine to be brought on board. Once you clear inspection, you'll drive to this booth where you will check in and get your keycard to your cabin. There will be a bit of a wait here as the crew slowly directs cars on board to different parking areas on the ship in order to ensure a balanced load. Once you have parked your car, you will need to bring your overnight bag down as access to the cars will be restricted once the ship is at sale. Make sure to bring down all the items you need, including any medications you require, as you won't be able to access the car later. When leaving your car, do take note of the color-coded lift or stairwell, as this will make finding your car easier the next day. There are essentially two main decks you may want to spend your time at if you are not in your cabin. Unfortunately, I lost the footage on my SD card, so you'll just have to listen to my voiceover. Deck 7 is the main lounge deck and you will find the market kitchen cafeteria here, as well as a bar, library and reception if you require assistance. There's also the outer deck area here that you can go to get some fresh air and see the ship at sail. There are also two cinemas near the orange lifts and a water station where you can refill your drinking water bottle. Deck 10 has another bar as well as a gaming area with four Xbox gaming stations for your kids to play some games on the journey. The sea can be pretty rough once you are in the bass straits and we did see people consuming alcohol early in the evening to help them sleep better on the journey. It is recommended to bring along some seasickness medications as a precaution. Upon arrival at Devonport the next morning, the ship will announce which parking decks are open. We would then head down to our cars to prepare to disembark. Disembarkation was quite straightforward and just before exiting, the port officials would check our COVID QR codes before letting us depart.
next leg of our journey was a drive to Launchester, which is about an hour east of Devonport. On our drive, we were graced with a beautiful sunrise with vast fields of empty farmlands on either side. Our first stop was at Trevallon Dam, which is just 10 minutes outside of Launchester and is a hydroelectric dam operated by Hydro Tasmania. Trevallon Dam also has a small tunnel known as an Elva Ladder to facilitate the migration of short fin eels up the river as part of their life cycle. In 2018, 90% of the state's power generation came from hydroelectric systems, while the remainder came from wind farms, making Tasmania one of the leaders in Australia, running 100% on renewable energy, along with the ACT at 100% renewable, and South Australia at 60% renewable. That's it for this video. Do join us on the next part when we travel to Cataract Gorge and then on down to Hobart.